everyone, I'm Josh Durrell. I'm the CEO of the Wyoming Business Council, and welcome to our podcast, What's the Point?, where we explore economic development concepts and principles through the lens of Wyomingites. And uh, we really like to focus in on those elements of policy, funding, and leadership, and how we can build local capacity. Ultimately, our goal is to make it so that all of our communities are thriving, their economies are moving forward, and we're not so dependent upon one or two things, that we're really resilient. And today, I have the pleasure of talking with Mandy Fable, who's the Executive Director of Leadership Wyoming. And as you might imagine, we're going to focus in on leadership. And um, Mandy, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you. And I'm, I'm really interested to learn a, a lot more about you as a person and also your experiences with Leadership Wyoming as you've been able to meet leaders across the state for many years now and, and see those classes move forward and really see your impact. So tell us a little bit about you and a little bit about Leadership Wyoming. Sure, thanks so much for having me. And I, I think the first time we met was actually a block from here in Coal Creek right after you became the new CEO and like a day before COVID shutdown happened. So it's yeah. nice to be back in person and connecting and working on projects together. So. Ab absolutely, it is. So Leadership Wyoming is best gig in town. Uh, it's such an awesome organization. I feel really lucky to get to work for Leadership Wyoming. So many people are familiar with our model, but we take between 40 and 44 people from around the state and run them through a nine month cohort. And the goal is to build connections, understand what's happening around the state, challenges, success stories, opportunities, and also help them think about the kind of leaders they want to be. So it's less of go be this one thing and more of self-discovery and building a network of people who can help you, much like you're talking yeah. about, kind of yep. building that ecosystem that can support resiliency and growth. So right. it is awesome. That's, uh, that's, that's a good metaphor for what we're trying to accomplish in a community, mm -hmm. right? Define the type of community you want to be, be the best at it, but we're not going to give you some sort of cookie cutter approach to it. Mm -hmm. It's really a, a, a self-discovery as a community, at a community level, and you're doing that with, with leaders or with individuals. Um, so how many people have gone through or graduated, I should say, Leadership Wyoming? We are, this class will put us over the thousand person mark. Wow. So Leadership Wyoming started in the year 2000. The first class was class of 2001. And around that number, 40, 45, we tipped up a little higher, a little bit before COVID, and then kind of came back down a little bit. But yeah. we'll be at a thousand graduates. And Really, it's many of the movers and shakers around the state um, right. and people who kind of aspire to really make a difference. And yeah. so we're now also starting to think about how we expand some of our programming and 40 people at a time it feels like a lot in the moment, but creating that critical mass, that's a drop in the bucket. So we're also right. trying to think about how we impact more and more people around the state. Right. So. And, and that's something that we'll be talking yeah, about uh, even more over the next few months with the Academy that's right. and, uh, and how Leadership Wyoming and, and the Business Council and, and others can really make a difference, maybe from an economic standpoint. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing I wanted to know about is what kind of transformation do you see from people over the course of a year? And what have you heard is the, you know, some of the, the big impact that you've had on individuals' lives? Sure. Well, it's, it's palpable in the way the class functions. So the first day they come to the program, um, we're usually up in Jackson or Pinedale for their treat, and everybody kind of walks into the room a little bit nervous, feeling mm -hmm. intimidated, feeling like, do I belong here? Who are these people? What did I sign up for? I can't miss as much work, that kind right. of overwhelmed feeling. And then you fast forward to graduation nine months later, and you truly have this family of leaders who show up for each other, uh, give advice, listen, give support. Uh, and you just see people really reconnect with kind of who they meant to be. I think there's this journey in adulthood that we set out with some lofty ideas and goals and maybe a path. And then life happens. We get busy and the job gets hard. We have a family and we just kind of start to become less of who we meant to be. And leadership yeah. bombing is a lot about reconnecting with that and encouraging people to take that and step into a place that maybe feels like a challenge or pushes them to that next level, but they have this safety net of people around them. Right. So we, I love seeing that transformation. And sometimes it's not, it doesn't finish at the graduation. You know, it may right. be a year or two years or five years later that they come back and say, you know, that really gave me the courage to start down this path and now look where I am. So we love those stories that sometimes people just needed a little spark and then yep. that all of a sudden the fire is going. Yeah. So. so so tell me a little bit about the typical age range, if mm -hmm. you will, or, or point in someone's career that they would 
encounter Leadership Wyoming? Sure. I like to say you can't be too old for Leadership Wyoming. You can be too young. Uh, and what I mean by that is we want people to come to the table with experience mm -hmm. and not just life experience, but experience in leadership roles. And so really it takes often until your late 20s or early 30s before you may have built a wealth of that type of experience where you've had influence, maybe you've made some mistakes and you've mm -hmm. learned and you've grown and you understand kind of the weight of that. Because we want to be able to make any arrangement of a seating chart and person A can talk to person B and they both can learn from each other and give to each other. So that's right. a lot of how we try to build that cohort. And I love the story. Um, actually, Derek Jared, who uh, we're in the building that he works in, but he was in a class with another Cheyenne class member who was in his 70s and they carpool to every session together and the learning that happened as they were going through that experience. So we really don't have an average age. It just kind of depends on the diversity of the class that we select. Yeah. And it, it to me, the, the, the thing that's really kind of stands out about that is that no matter where you are in your, in your life or your journey or your career, taking a look at where you want to go and reassessing that and, and learning the skills to do that, there's, there's no shame in it. That's an, that's an mm -hmm. opportunity. And, and as I look at it and I, I try to draw those metaphors for a community, mm -hmm. right? You, you, maybe you've been running down a path for a long, long time. And that's not so much that that path is bad, but that path may not get you where you want to go. Mm -hmm. And so stepping back and reassessing and saying, what assets do we have? What can we learn from? How, what skills do we need? What, what sites do we need? What do we need to do to get to that next spot? There's no shame in reassessing and maybe even Absolutely. taking a step back. And, and that's something that um, it's hard to do as an individual. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's even harder to do as a community mm -hmm. because now you're talking about many individuals. And so, um, as you mentioned, you have had folks that are you know far along in their career. And can you talk about maybe those times where they've said that had that aha moment, like, hey, I'm going to I'm going to change some things or, or dramatically go in a, in a different direction. Have you had that? We absolutely have. One of the exercises we do is people crafting a personal mission statement. And when mm -hmm. we announce that we're going to do this exercise, sometimes it kind of seems cliche, like, oh, oh okay, that's like, you know, am I going to draft some comments or how do I do this? But as people start that process, they really dig into their values and things that fuel them and motivate them and have that reflection. And sometimes the conclusion is what I value and what I find meaning in isn't aligning with right. where I'm at. And that's usually what sort of sparks a change. And again, it might not be instant. They might not go home and quit but they start thinking about their life in a different way. And I've maybe turned that question back to you that as a busy leader or a community, it's hard to find time to reflect and to mm -hmm. even create space yep. that some of those thoughts can start to bubble in. So yeah. I would love to hear from you, like where do you find that space to reflect and kind of course correct if you feel like you're not on that path? Yeah, well, well, thanks. I think actually I'm in this role because of that reflection mm, yeah. and and the the idea that you could have a life purpose and you have to make sure that you're fulfilling that mm -hmm. and that you're not taking time off from it is, mm -hmm. a, is a critical thing. And that's actually why I'm in this role is cool. that um, you know many years ago, I, I drafted my life purpose and it's something that I reflect on and, and utilize day to day to make sure my behavior's in, in check and also sure. to make sure that I know where I'm going. Um, and, and I found myself at a spot where I said, well, could there be an opportunity to make a bigger impact? Mm -hmm. Could that be, uh, a situation that that I could go play a role in and and have you know learn a lot, but at the same time really maybe have a have a different sized impact. And um, the funny thing is, is that you just sort of have to decide. Yeah. And a lot of times it's an external external factors that make you decide. Mm -hmm. And again, if you think about the metaphors between communities and between individuals, mm -hmm. they're so strong. And I think we just need to draw on that mm -hmm. um, because you have those external events that happen. Maybe it's the outside world. Maybe it's the, the way the consumers are behaving or whatever it is, sure. it changes the way a community is. The same thing happens to individuals and you have those external influences and you go, gosh, I am I going in the right direction? Mm -hmm. could, is there another path that could get me there further faster? Mm -hmm. Or you know, just having that time. For me, um, for me, it's it's something where I think for me, coaching has been an area where I can do that because yeah. you get to see some of the progress maybe, and you get to kind of see it as a microcosm of of a life, as seeing somebody yeah. develop their skills in a in a, in a sport, mm -hmm. and that's kind of fun to do that. Um, I think it's it's one of those things that we probably don't step back and and think about enough. I think the other place, and this is something that that uh, again we we try to encourage is taking action towards something, mm -hmm. right? Even if it's not the perfect action, it, then taking action, there's gonna be learning from that, mm -hmm. right? So it's taking a step, 
looking at it, assessing what problem am I solving? What am I going to do about it? And then, then taking a look and say, did I get any closer right. or did I get further? Because both of those things are valuable mm -hmm. and it's, ma it's a matter of whether you, what you do next after that and you say, okay, now I'm going to take another one. And I think that action is something that we want to encourage. And, um, then the next thing I wanted to ask you about was this idea of confidence mm -hmm. and how do we, how do we develop confidence? And, and what transition do you see with people in their confidence, maybe before Leadership Wyoming or after Leadership Wyoming, and maybe some of the different types of confidence that folks have? And I, I'm really interested in that because our, to me, our goal within our communities is to have a confident economy. And I think that's the ultimate level where the individuals within the community have the confidence to know that no matter what happens from the outside, we're resilient enough to, to address that challenge head on and move forward. And that's something that we're working to build. And I think you can look at how do you build that within people? Yeah, I like that question a lot. Are we confident in our economy? Um, a quote that I really like, and I'll probably butcher it a little bit, but it relates to what you were just saying and this question too, which is if it feels, it's Naval Ravikant. And he says, if it feels like play to you and work to other people, they can never beat you. Mm -hmm. And I really think there's a lot of truth to that, that if you can, wiggle into something that feels playful and also like you are enjoying it and you're willing to work mm -hmm. hard and long and whatever obstacles come up, you're willing to push through them that people can't win if it feels like work to them because they're going right. to go home at five and yep. clock out and whatever that might be. And so I think that's a lot of finding that passion, resilience, and that confidence as well is finding things you can own and feel playful to you. And, you know, that can be running coal mines or that can yeah. be, it doesn't have to be truly like a playful activity, but something where you can really excel. And I think with your confidence question, that's a lot of times what we see in Leadership Wyoming is people have maybe been pushed into a certain area with their career or their job or circumstances, and they're just kind of getting by or surviving. And mm -hmm. then they have this time, two and a half days a month, away from your job, away from your family, away from your daily obligations, drive time, which we're so thankful for. We talked to some programs in states that run just city programs like Leadership yep. Seattle or something like that. And they talk to us and they're like, we can't believe your people drive five hours to get to a session. And we are like, we can't believe that yours don't. Like that's right. part of the disconnect for us is driving time mm -hmm. and thinking time and turning some of those thoughts into action. That's the drive home. You know, that's right. when they're going back home. And so I think we really see that reflection time. And then the cool part is the network chimes in and they see you for your potential. They see you for your greatest yep. attributes. You aren't carrying any baggage in the door with you when you come in on day one. Yeah. You're just a fellow class member. And so it creates this sandbox where you get to be this person you kind of meant to be before, and yeah. then you get some reinforcement from the people around you. And then that builds the confidence back to say, I am joyful, or I am a great communicator. Or, I am really thoughtful. And I think practicing that over the course of nine months, then they get to own that when they walk out the door. And whenever they're feeling empty of that, they go back to the well of their classmates and kind right. of refill their cup in that way. It sounds a little cliche or hokey, yep. like as I'm nope. saying it, but I think it's what we, I recently heard several quotes talking about how as humans, we're, we're meant to live as a pack or pack animals. Right. We're, we're right. used to depending on each yep. other and we need each other, but we live in a society that doesn't really value that or create space for that. Mm -hmm. And so I really, see and believe that to be true in leadership where you're creating your own pack of people to support you and that rises everybody up right and we're we're fortunate to live in a state where you know we have a small population mm -hmm. and our pack is is right yeah. around half a million people yeah. right yeah. and and there's there really aren't that many disconnects if you talk about somebody you know that you talk about one yeah. more person they know them yep. right and and yep. and utilizing that as a strength i think it is is really it critical keeps us honest in a really important yeah. way I was in a kind of heated um, mediation in Lander. There's this Via Ferrata project that was happening and mm -hmm. it became quite heated. Mm -hmm. And we were in a mediation discussion around it. And then somebody who was on the opposing side that I was, we ran into each other buying eggs at the grocery store. <laughs> Just like, hey, hey, like yeah. you have that level of accountability and honesty. Right. And I think it keeps us remembering that we're just humans. Yeah. They still have to buy their eggs. I have to buy my eggs, whether yeah. or not we agree on this particular issue. Right. So. Let's let's dive into that a little bit because respect is a is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Respect is is really important, and it can be 
more and more challenging as folks maybe hide behind a keyboard or folks uh, don't feel as connected and they feel like they have a platform to, to talk about that. Um, but, but I think that's something that maybe Wyoming could, could benefit from is, is realizing that we're a pretty small pack mm -hmm. and, and uh, we don't always have to see eye to eye, but maybe that respect piece is, is a really critical thing. How, and, and if you're talking about transformation mm -hmm. and you're talking about people um, being willing to, to transform, that takes guts, mm -hmm. right? So, so you've got to create an environment where respect is the foundation. Absolutely. And, and so how do, you, how do you create that in Leadership Wyoming? Yes, well, it's, it's a tall order and it's becoming more difficult. I really think even in my five years of being at the organization, the level of potential polarization or unrest that comes from any of the many issues we talk about is increasing. It's on a trend mm -hmm. upward, not downward. Um, and we are fortunate in that we're not a public-based entity, and so we are curating and cultivating, and so we have a little more influence yep. in some of that than maybe, say, a public meeting or a city sure. council meeting or something like that. Um, I'll give away a little secret to our application process, so your listeners are going to get, like, a leg up. Oh, Listen top in. secret. <laughs> so one of the questions we ask in our application is, talk about a failure or a success that you have had, and, or talk about a failure or a lesson learned recently. And from that question alone, we get such a window into how people view themselves and how people view other people. And this is that respect question. Sometimes we'll get answers along the lines of, oh, I'm having a really hard time hiring because nobody will work hard anymore. And it's like, well, that's not really a failure that you're owning or a lesson that you learned. Right. That's blaming context and other people and, and not respecting you know, that situation. And so we do intentionally look for those kind of red flags of, mm -hmm. is your worldview one of integrity right. and honesty and respect and trust? And then if we don't see that, you're not going to get into the program. So that's right. like one filter. Two is I think we're fortunate that we have a reputation that the goal mm -hmm. of our program is to have conversation, dialogue, have difficult conversations that you may not be able to have elsewhere. And so there's a self-selection that people apply who want to do that. And so we benefit from that. But all that said, we still have to work at it. We still right. have to help people see each other as humans and build connections that overcome stereotypes, whether it's yep. you're from Jackson, you're from Gillette, or maybe you look like a rancher, you look like a you know liberal nonprofit worker, like whatever right. people come in with, we really try to overcome those through time and trust shared meals, things that right. we as humans know break down those walls, but it is very intentional. Yeah. Th so that, that whole idea of, of kind of looking at, looking at it from a way of, you know, I always look at it as solving problems is better done with, with diverse groups, mm -hmm. right? To get the multiple perspectives, you're going you're gonna to be better at solving, solving those problems. And I, I love think- love that quote. If everyone around the table agrees with you, you're wasting everyone's time. That's, that's, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah totally. that's absolutely, absolutely true. And I think if you have that, um, either it's either a, a common shared respect or it's a, it's the common goal, even though you might see it in a different way. And one of the things that we've been we've been really working hard on uh, with folks is is realizing that we're doing this to build stronger communities. Mm -hmm. Right, everything we're doing is really focused on stronger communities. And and so people will well yeah, but you say that, but you didn't do a project that was a community focused project. We say well, yeah. our lens is through economic development. So we build a stronger community by having a resilient economy. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at it, we know that, you know, great jobs are a key to that. Primary jobs are a key to that. Money from the outside world coming into our communities is a key to that. We're not saying that those projects are bad. We're just mm -hmm. saying that these, this is the way we can help the most. And I think once you frame things in, we're all focusing on the same thing with a slightly different lens or mm -hmm. here's how we can help. It, for me, it, it tends to, it tends to, really be hard to argue against strong communities, right? Yeah, it's like, right. well, gosh, uh, we don't want those. I mean, everybody yeah. wants that, right? Yeah. And um, and so I think from a leadership point of view, we especially the folks you see, they probably all want to kind of get to that next level of leadership and have that much more of an impact. And so here's a here's a th thing that I'm, I'm guessing Leadership Wyoming faces and you, you have a way to deal with it. And it's that difference between a lot of times people think leaders are the ones who sort of, they, they take, they take people's work and they make it into something or they take the credit or they take all those things. But, but I think what we want people to understand is that leaders give and, and the, the, you know, leadership is not about grabbing everybody and, and running them in a direction. Leadership is about listening and, and all those. So talk to me a little bit about either some changes that people experience or, 
you know, how do, how do folks kind of pull that off? Mm -hmm. And with the traditional view of leadership is not always like that. Yeah, great question. Um, a couple things come to mind. I recently read a book, The Soul of Money. I don't know if you've heard of it. Oh, I haven't. Um, it's very good, I'd recommend it. And they talk about uh, abundance mindset versus a mm -hmm. scarcity mindset. And that when you have a scarcity mindset, it's always grabbing for pieces of the pie and feeling if, you, if somebody else gets it, you can't have it. And we see that even in Wyoming communities. Oh, they got this business, that's a business that didn't come to us. Or right. they got this grant, that's a grant that didn't come to us. Yep. And an abundance mindset says there's not a finite amount of joy of money of employees businesses opportunities these things there's always more if i just am open to finding them and so i really think that is such a pivotal lesson but it's hard we, yep. we even though we're pack animals we are also creatures of competition for yep. survival and so we have this ever competing tension between collaborating and competing and we have to constantly fight that and i think at its best it sharpens us to be a better yep. version of like i didn't get that grant I should go find out how I could do better and right. try again. But we can also still celebrate successes that other people have and wins that other people have. So that comes to mind a little bit of just that um, abundance mindset. And yep. then the other thing, we've really instituted a piece of curriculum. We call It's called Gracious Space, and we've worked with the author of that book. And one of the tenets of Gracious Space is learning in public. And it's the willingness to admit that you may be wrong and be open to learning something even in front of other people. So in a world today that when your position is challenged, the role models we see are dig your heels in, double down, like at this point you have no choice. And right. we really encourage and show the mindset of being open to the idea that your opinion could be wrong or you might change your opinion and you want to know new facts, new information and learn in that space. And that I think is so much more useful and especially in a small community mm -hmm where if you burn a bridge, you may need that bridge in the future. And if it's yeah. gone, it's gone. And yeah. so those are just a couple of things that come to mind. Yeah, think about how those two go together, right? You, so you, if, you think about, if you think about your, either it's your pride or your ego or your reputation as a finite set, mm -hmm. and every time you're wrong, a piece of that goes away, yeah. then it is a scarcity mindset, right? Yeah. But what, what I think, and, and this is again, a, a great metaphor, is, is the idea that actually you can increase that, you can increase all of that, by admitting you're wrong and learning from it mm -hmm. and getting better and using those as tools to get better rather than as tools to 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 fail. Yep. And and we we do see that. You mentioned a few of those, you know, well that project didn't come to yeah. our community or or we didn't get that that grant or we didn't get that that service. And and so what what we always do is say, well what what can you learn from that? Mm -hmm. And we have some really good examples. There are some communities that have come to us with an idea and we're like, you know, it's just not it's just not in our wheelhouse. It's not that it's a bad project, yeah. but it's just not in our wheelhouse. And the communities that I always know are gonna succeed yeah. are the ones who take that no, yep. and they go, okay, but what can we do? Mm -hmm. And what's next? And how do, we, how do we learn from that experience and go on? And those are the ones that, re regardless of the, the funding and the number of no's or whatever, they're yeah. the ones that end up thriving. Absolutely. And I think that's that goes to that mindset of, of like, oh, this isn't final. Yeah. This is a step in the direction. Now we know what's not going to work, and let's let's start going in the direction that is. Um, and and it's but it is kind of hard when it's when yeah. pride is involved mm -hmm. or with uh, when expectation is involved. That can be pretty challenging. What do you think your what do you think your graduates would say is the is maybe the biggest one eighty that they experience in in leadership, in their journey through Leadership Wyoming? Sure, I think it depends on the person and where they come in and what's going on in their lives. The thing we consistently hear is, I signed up for Leadership Wyoming because people told me to and because they said, mm -hmm. you'll learn a lot about the state and what I'm taking with me is this network of 40 people who yep. I didn't know I needed. Yep. And that's consistently ab above the experiences, above the curriculum, it's the people that they carried with them. And I think that just, reinforces this idea that we don't have all the answers and we do need people who we have trust and respect and camaraderie who come at things from different perspectives. You know, I like to talk about how when we are faced with a conflict, let's say something happens, you don't get your way at work, you're feeling really frustrated, you're sort of like spooling up, who you call to talk about it will be a direct predictor of which direction you want it to go. Do you want to call the person who's going to sort of play devil's advocate and remind you what you could learn from it and what you, how you maybe didn't handle it quite right? Or do you call the person who's like, oh, yeah, they're terrible. Like, I can't, you know, you can choose that destiny of 
how you handle those experiences. And I think of the Leadership Wyoming cohort as 40 people you can call who will empathize with honesty and a solution mindset of like, okay, where can we go with this? And so that's, you know, that's probably hitting just about every scenario you might face that you're going to have somebody you can reach out to either for their local expertise, their industry expertise, the kind of person and leader they are, and give you a fair backstop to whatever you're facing, as opposed to just like drilling into frustration and doom or being arrogant and flippant and not even contemplating. Right. So, Right. And that's, I I think if if the more interactions you can have like that, where you, where you kind of either, either go down that right one where you, where you ask people to be honest with you and you ask people for maybe some empathy, but, but mostly honesty and you can take that. I think that's a, that's a big key. Yeah. And it, it definitely says a lot about the the word resilience, mm-hmm. right? We we want yeah. to we want to increase the resilience in in Wyoming, and I think it comes down to individuals who are resilient. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you if you again you think about the communities in our state, I I bet as you think about those communities, you think about the the people within those communities, mm-hmm. and some of those people represent. You're, you're like, gosh, I I envy that community because of these these folks, and I and I think Leadership Wyoming is creating mm-hmm. a lot of that. Right, yeah. and, it, and it's creating now a, a thousand yeah. and, and more people who maybe have the tools now and they can continue to, to spread that and be the person who, you know, a few people call when they're a little bit fired up and yeah. they get the honest, uh, yeah. honest truth to things. And, you know, one of the things that we, we want to continue to do is be okay with not the word, maybe not the word failure, mm-hmm. but be okay with the idea that what we did wasn't perfect or yeah. it, it was it was a it was learning along the way. And as long as we're continuing to iterate, we're going to get better. But that first step is, oops, I, yeah. we we goofed that up and we're yeah. okay with it. Um, and it's hard in the short time, yeah. but it's really it's much better in the long run because then people know that you're, you're giving them the straight answer. Like, no, we, we screwed up. And if yep. you can admit that, you're going to get that, that it's right liberating. answer. It's You know, it's like yeah. people who don't tell the whole truth and they sort of have to hold this piece of their brain to remember, like, what story did I tell and how do I make sure to preserve that? Because now I can't tell a different story. If you're just overly transparent and honest and willing to accept failure. And I'll be honest, this was a hard lesson for me to learn personally. I grew up as a very high achieving student and an athlete and put very high expectations on myself. And honestly, it was an experience with Knowles on a, on a backcountry course where I got my group lost, um, not following the map correctly. And I sort of had this realization that I was like, well, I can either blame the map, which is not going to be the actual, like that wasn't the map's yeah. fault. That was me. Or I can figure out where we are, take care of the people around me, admit the mistake, and just try to get us back on track. And that's a, such a tangible, obvious example of like, well, you can't fake that. But I think, it, as you say, the metaphor applies that you can hold, you can use so much more mental, physical, emotional capacity if you're able to absorb things, reflect, admit failure, admit successes, praise other people, recognize yourself, all these things, if they don't take up too much energy in your head, you have so much more opportunity. It's not just being squirreled away, trying to remember what you said to defend your own position. Right. So. Yeah, th- that's such a good metaphor. I, I actually think we should probably end right there. Okay, because on my failure I, story, and again, thanks on, a lot. Yeah, I do what I can, <laughs> um, be, be, but it was a success story. Yeah, because apparently absolutely. you did find your way because yeah, you made it here absolutely. today <laughs> and, um, and, and you probably learned a lot more. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that that's a, that's a big key for us. There's a lot of pride in what we've accomplished, mm-hmm. but we can't let that get in the way of where we want to go and where we want to go might require a little backtracking. Mm-hmm. It might require a little bit of rethinking. It might require a different, slightly different brand than we've had. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that because ultimately, again, we want to build the best people we can with, which is what you're doing with Leadership Wyoming. And ultimately we want those people to fill the communities that we have in Wyoming. So thank you for today. I, yeah, I really appreciate this discussion. It was One really good. One of my good. very favorite quotes is from Winnie the Pooh. And it says, sometimes we have to rethink the things we thought we thought through. I think that is very insightful. So thanks Indeed. for having me. My pleasure. Thanks. Yeah.